Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Nursing with Ray. I'm Ray yours truly. And as you guys can tell by the title in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you all on how to get an A in pharmacology. Um, this video was one that's been kind of highly requested. Like a lot of people have been asking me to do videos on how to do well in specific uh, courses. And I'm going to see if I can get those videos out to you guys. So pharmacology is said to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest nursing course that you're going to have to do because it's a lot of information that you have to know and memorize and a lot of stuff. Um, I did pharmacology last semester and I got an A in it. So I'm just going to share some of the tips that I use to be able to get an A so that you can get an A too. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ray. I'm a third year nursing student here in Jamaica. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe down below and leave a like on this video. So pharmacology, it's kind of a content heavy course because you have a lot of medications to learn. So if you're watching this video and you haven't done pharmacology yet, you're maybe not sure what it is. Pharmacology is a course that we do in nursing school um, and medical school too. Um, that is basically all about drugs, different medications. It teaches you about how those drugs work in the body, um, the effects they have, what you do as a nurse when you're administering these medications, how to administer them, all of that, how to calculate um, dosages and drip factors and all that type of stuff. So that is what pharmacology is all about, basically. So when it comes to studying pharmacology, I realize that one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they try to study all of the drugs individually. If you're trying to remember every single thing about every individual drug, that is not going to work. There are too many drugs, you are not gonna remember everything. And even after you finish your pharmacology course, the learning does not end there. You're constantly gonna be introduced to new drugs every day in the clinical area. And even as a registered nurse, you're gonna be learning new drugs every day. So it is a constant learning basically up until you retire. So pharmacology does not end here, basically. So when it comes to drugs, drugs are grouped into different classes based on their properties and how they act on the body. So when you're trying to study or trying to remember medications, do not try and remember every single individual one because that is not gonna work, I can guarantee you. You need to group the medications. So say for example, you have a broad term of antihypertensives. So these are medications that we use to lower the blood pressure, right? So under the umbrella of antihypertensives, we have different subgroups. So we have beta blockers, we have calcium channel blockers, we have um, angiotensin receptor blockers, we have diuretics. So there are different subgroups under each and you need to know the mechanism of action of each of these different types of drugs and also the suffixes or prefixes because that is another tool that is gonna help you to be able to identify what medications are even if you're not necessarily familiar with them. So I'm gonna give you an example. The scientists, the chemists, the doctors, whosoever came up with these names for these medications, they named them in a certain way um, based on their mechanism of action, their property, how they work in the body. So they give a lot of these medications the same prefix or the same suffix. So when you hear these suffixes or prefixes, it can help you to identify what type of medication it is. So for example, beta blockers. Beta blockers typically end in lol or olol. So O-L-O-L -O -L or L-O-L. -L. So say for example, atenolol, propanolol, labetalol, those are all beta blockers. So once you see a medication that ends in law, maybe maybe you're familiar with atenolol, but you're not so familiar with propanolol. So you see propanolol and you're like, what is this? No need to freak out, okay? You see the olol at the end, so you're like, oh, this is more than likely a beta block, a beta blocker, just like atenolol, okay? And so they will have the same mechanism of action and then you'll know how to proceed in terms of the medication because now you're familiar with what type of medication it actually is. 
Um, another example, just sticking with the antihypertensives, are calcium channel blockers. So calcium channel blockers tend to end in pine. So P-I-N-E. So like your nifedipine, your amlodipine, when you see those, you'll know that those are calcium channel blockers based on the suffixes. So you don't have to study every single one. I don't have to know every single thing about nifedipine and then every single thing about uh, amlodipine, for example. I know the broad term of antihypertensives, right? I know they're supposed to lower the blood pressure. Okay, I know the subgroups, I know how they work in different ways. So based on knowing that, I can use my critical thinking to figure out what the therapeutic uses are, what the side effects are, what are some of the nursing interventions that I would have to do when I'm administering this medication, some things that I would have to teach my patient when it comes to this medication, and so on and so forth. So that brings me to the next point is, the most important thing that you need to know about a drug is the mechanism of action. Once you know the mechanism of action, you can automatically deduce a lot of other things about the medication. I mean, you want to know as many things about the medication as you can, but the main thing that you should learn is the mechanism of action. I'm going to use an example, warfarin. So we know that warfarin is an anticoagulant, right? The mechanism of action of warfarin now. So Warfarin basically inhibits the production of an enzyme, I can't remember the name of the enzyme right now, that is responsible for the activation of vitamin K. Okay, now vitamin K is very crucial to um, the formation of a lot of clotting factors. So clotting factors are things that we have in our blood that help our blood to clot, basically. So once warfarin is introduced, Vitamin K will not be released, and so a lot of these clotting factors will not be made. And so if these clotting factors aren't made, the blood isn't going to clot. So it's a blood thinner, it's an anticoagulant. Once I know that about warfarin, then I know what warfarin it could be possibly used to treat. So we can use it to treat things like DVT, right? Deep vein thrombosis for people who have a lot of thrombi, pulmonary emboli, things like that, breaking up the blood clots, and other things. So once you know the mechanism of action, you can deduce those things, okay? We can deduce some possible side effects. If this is a blood thinner, what is one of the main side effects that we want to look out for in our patients? That's going to be bleeding, prolonged or excessive bleeding, bruising, um, hematuria possibly, um, that is blood in the urine and things like that, even blood in the stool, among other things. So anything that has to do with bleeding is probably the first thing that should pop up into your mind when you think about side effects of warfarin. Okay, so we know that warfarin is an anticoagulant. It's going to thin out our patient's blood. Our patient is now at risk for bleeding and things like that. What are some interventions that you need to take now as a nurse? What are some things that you need to consider? Well, you know, you're going to need to monitor the patient's clotting time, their PTT, their INR, things like that are things that you should start to think about when you think about a patient on anticoagulants, something that is going to put them at risk of bleeding, okay? Now, when it comes to patient teaching, because when you administer medications, there are some teaching that you need to do with your patient, right? So if your patient is at risk of bleeding, what are some things that you'd want to educate them about? You'd want to educate your patient about avoiding certain hazardous activities. So anything that is going to put them at risk of getting hurt and bleeding, because once they start bleeding, it's going to be very hard for them to stop because they are on that anticoagulant therapy. So that are just some of the first things that should pop into your mind, you know, telling your patient to use a softer bristle toothbrush because they can start have bleeding gums, um, things like that, you know, are things that you should possibly think about when you start to really think about the side effects and what warfarin actually does. So once you know the mechanism of action of a drug, I'd say you're pretty much almost good to go because you can deduce a lot of information just from that. Now another tip that I would give when it comes to studying for pharmacology is that you just really have to do a lot of repetition. Um, you know, memorize the classes of the drugs, the prefixes and the suffixes, but also just make flashcards. Flashcards will help you a lot. A lot of repetition and the more you do that is the more the information will stick. So as for me, when I was doing pharmacology, we had 60 drugs that we had to know 
for our final examination, um, our OSCE examination. So we had to know those 60 drugs. And what our lecturer did was she assigned six of those drugs to us every week. So we had to create drug cards with all the information um, about each of the six drugs. And then we would have a quiz on it every single week. So even if your teacher, professor, whatever, doesn't do that, you can take it upon yourself to create a certain amount of drug cards every week and quiz yourself on it because that is how you're going to learn. That is how you're going to remember the information. Okay, so flashcards are a great, great way. Take your flashcards everywhere with you. If you're going to lab, if you're going on the road, if you're going to do something recreational, just bring your little flashcards along with you and every now and then you can just swat through them, look through them, and learn more and more and more about the drugs. Now, speaking of repetition, I want to introduce something to you guys. If you're not new to the channel, then you've heard me talk about this a million times, but that is Picmonic. Now, Picmonic is an audiovisual learning app for all things medical, medical students, nursing students, respiratory therapy students, I think occupational therapy students too. I'm not 100% sure, but Picmonic is a great, great resource for you if you're in nursing school. Not even if you're just in nursing school, like even after you graduate, if you're a new grad and you want to just brush up on certain things, if you're switching specialties and you want to brush up on some information, it is an amazing resource for pharmacology and for all your nursing courses, to be honest. So Picmonic basically uses a series of videos, animated videos, to help you to understand the content because they break it down into such a simple way that literally I feel like even if you're not in the medical field or nursing school at all, you can understand a lot of these videos just because of how simple they are broken down. They're really cool, they're funny, they're quirky, and our brain is always going to remember things that are funny and entertaining, right? And they also have different quizzes that you can take at the end of each Picmonic that you watch, and there are daily quizzes that you can take based on all the picmonics that you've watched and you can set like your limit of how many questions you want to do each day and it is a really really amazing app for nursing students i have a 20 percent discount code with them and i'm going to leave that link in the description box below so if you want to check out picmonic use the link in my description box for 20 percent off it is an amazing resource and it's so affordable you guys should really really try it out now another part of pharmacology um, that is very important is dosage calculation. So pharmacology is not just about learning the drugs and all that, you know, it's also about calculating because you're not only giving pills, you're giving IV medications and things like that. You're going to give injections and all that type of stuff. So a lot of times the, medica the medication has to be calculated. So dosage calculation is also an important part of pharmacology and a hard part for a lot of people, especially if you're not strong in math. So if you are about to do pharmacology, say next semester or whatever the case may be, like if you haven't started yet, and even if you have started, brush up on your math skills, your arithmetic, how to convert fractions to decimals and vice versa. You have to know your conversions. Conversions are very important. Converting grams to micrograms to milligrams, etc converting pounds to kilograms, things like that, especially when it comes to like calculating pediatric doses because we had to do that and you know there are safe doses and when it comes to children the amount of medication they can get it depends on their weight so a lot of times the weight is in pounds and then the formula is like okay for example 20 milligrams per kilogram per day or something and then you have to convert the child's weight from pounds to kilograms before you can do the calculation and a lot of that stuff you have to know how many milliliters make up a cup how many teaspoons make up a tablespoon all that type of stuff you have to know your conversions that is very important I would say get a chart or something paste it up practice look at it learn your conversions memorize them all of that because that is going to be critical for dosage calculation you cannot use calculators so you have to be really really strong in your math skills to be able to be successful and also when it comes to dosage calc I would say really practice get a lot of the questions Practice them, do them over and over and over again so that when you see similar questions, you will know how to approach them because this is a very important part of nursing school. Um, a lot of schools require their students to get 100% on their dosage calculations. Some schools require you to get like 70, 80 above. So you have to do really well 
on this exam to be able to progress because this is very important obviously this is medications these are things that can hurt people kill people we don't want to get into that but you need to make sure that you are competent when it comes to calculating dosages and medications and stuff like that so that is also something that you really do need to put into practice let me know in the comments down below if you guys want me to do like a dedicated video about dosage calculations how to work certain questions and things like that because I can do that for you guys because I know that is a big part of pharmacology for me personally I, did, I didn't really struggle with that part because I my math is pretty good but I'd say the hardest part for me was the memorizing and learning the medications but let me know if you guys want me to do a video on that and then the other part of pharmacology now is just about medication administration so learning the different rights of medication administration you know right patient right medication right dose right route right time right documentation all that stuff you need to know that and the steps when it comes to checking your medication checks those are very 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 important because if you don't check right you can possibly make a mistake that leads to medication errors and things that we do not want so when it comes to those your checks that is just practice really you have to your school will give you like your checklist or whatever go through your checklist practice every day take up a bottle of ibuprofen that you have at home or whatever a bottle of pills whatever it is get your mom your dad whoever and go through the checks practice act as if you are administering this medication to a patient in the hospital practice and practice because you are going to be tested on it at the end of the course, right? So you need to make sure that you have it down. It's a lot of practice. It's a lot of repetition. It is a lot of content. <laughs> but I guarantee that if you do take these tips into consideration, that you can get an A in pharmacology. It is not as hard as people make it. You just really have to be strategic about it. Like I told you guys, don't try to learn every individual medication. Learn the classes of medications learn them in the groups so you have your beta blockers your calcium channel blockers your diuretics all those types of things your different types of antibiotics all that you can learn it if you're smart about it and you employ the tips you can do well in pharmacology and i'm rooting for you guys you can do great trust me if, if i did good you can do good too. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative. I hope, I hope you learned something. I hope it actually helped. If you want that video on dosage calculation, let me know in the comments down below. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please like the video as well. It really helps the channel to get seen by other persons and to grow and so we can help a lot more nursing students. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.